Hello and welcome to Start Over Coffee. My name is Shaquilla Smith and I lead the community in marketing here at Start. Start Over Coffee is all about having conversations with creators in the Salt Lake City area. And for this episode, we'll be interviewing Savannah Adams, who is the founder of Navi Brand. And Navi Brand is a branding agency focused on building customer relationships and creating consistency. And today we'll be discussing what it's like to be a woman serial entrepreneur. Hey, Savannah, how are you? I am good. How are you? Good. It's so good to see your lovely face and to have you on this podcast. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah. You're such like a cool woman figure that has been in my life, you know, and a woman entrepreneur, but also just like a leader, like you embody leadership qualities. Thank you. That is very, very sweet to say. Yeah, no, I, I mean, we've met in college and I, seriously ever since I met you like I really love this girl and her energy and like you know you're gonna like do something cool in your life and it like to be a part of that journey is so awesome thank you well I will say I thought the exact same thing about you oh. and I loved when we got to work together at Lasonde it was phenomenal yeah. um all of our time together in college was great so it's cool to be able to reconnect as you know, I'm going to say adults, but I know we were adults in college too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just more adulting. Yeah, more adult. yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> Let's start off the podcast with you telling everybody who you are and what you're working on. For sure. Yeah. So I'm Savannah Adams. Um, I am a serial entrepreneur. I have been at heart pretty much my whole life, but it really like flourished in college. Um, so I'm currently running two businesses. I have um, my my primary position is at Navi, my branding company, and um, it's a branding company that basically focuses on sustainable and ethical companies. So it's a, a phenomenal position to be in. And then I also have a clothing store for children and moms that's also a secondhand. It's a sustainable focused clothing store. Um, where we upcycle and recycle clothing. Yeah, I know. It's so crazy. I can't keep up with you. I'm like, <laughs> I assumed you had a podcast, like when we spoke and I'm like, she has to have a podcast of some sort <laughs> because yours is so purposefully like the initiative you have for all of those businesses. I mean, it's so amazing. You need a podcast, by the way. <laughs> Thank um, you. But yeah. It's so funny because I just posted on my story, I think uh -huh. literally this morning before I read your message and was like, hey, like, what should my next step be? Like, I'm ready to like, kind of like expand. <laughs> and yes, every, like, I probably got like 20 responses that was like, hey, when are you starting a podcast? I'm like, oh, okay. That's, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, you should. I mean, it's so, I, it's funny because starting a podcast, I feel like, is a little bit intimidating, it's you know, so and there's just so many of them and you're like, is, is what I put out there good enough yeah. for people to listen? <laughs> like it is intimidating, but you would do amazing. Like I already know it. Like you're such a Thank friendly, you. exciting person to talk to. So, I mean, like everyone would love to listen to what you have to say and you're very, very smart. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, so I want to dive, I know that, you know, you're working on a lot of businesses, but I want to dive into like your story as an entrepreneur. Like how did you start? Mm -hmm. What inspired you to be an entrepreneur? Yeah. So like I said, I feel like I've kind of done it my whole life. And so I think that yeah. the, the real drive to be an entrepreneur started with my parents. Um, since I've known them, they've just been, you know, business owners. Um, my mom, my dad, like always makes this joke about my mom because she gets this seven year itch with a career. So she'll like dive into something and then seven years in, she gets a stable and then she's like, Hey, like I'm ready to start a new business and jumps and goes and does this other thing. And everything she touches just it turns to gold. Like she's just phenomenal. Phenomenal. And so I think that a lot of it came from my mom, but I never really recognized it. You know, I was always, I want to say like freelancing, you know, I, I was always doing my own thing and I had side hustles and, but in my mind, I was never an entrepreneur. I was, I was just going to go join the corporate world and do that. And then um, in college, when I started with Lassonde, I kind of stumbled into Lassonde in a very organic way. Um, and it really like, solidified my passion for entrepreneurship. I was around people and I was like, this, this is my group. Like, this is where I was meant to be. And then I left Lassonde and went and joined the corporate world. And in my mind, I was like, oh, that's like a college thing. And again, like, it was like this weird thing where I kind of tricked myself into believing that like entrepreneurship wasn't really a career and I needed to go and be a certain way or that I should or shouldn't be something. 
And so, um, again, I had all of these side hustles, you know, like I was like grooming dogs on the side. I, I was doing that. doula work. <laughs> I was, yeah, like I was doing like, I was, um, you know, like helping moms with like, um, you know, breastfeeding and like, I was just doing all of these things on the side and like getting paid here and there and doing some of them free. And I was upcycling clothes and selling them. And like in my, like I was an entrepreneur, I just wasn't really acknowledging it. Yeah. Um, but then I got um, in partnership with my, with the co-founder of Navi and she was just phenomenal. She was like that piece that I needed that, you know, my creative crazy mind needed to like kind of organize everything together and like solidify it as a business. And so, you know, I cannot stress the importance of like great partnerships, but she's been phenomenal. And so we came together and we're able to build a really successful branding agency really quickly. And it's the thing that's like, you know, been where I've been able to pour my creativity and my passion. Um, and it's been so phenomenal. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I feel like that is it. You touched upon it. Like a lot of entrepreneurs sometimes don't call themselves entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like it takes time sometimes. They're like, well, I don't know if that's necessarily an, I'm an entrepreneur because this yeah. is my side hustle. Yeah. But I mean, that is entrepreneurship, right? It's the side yeah. hustling. So yes. I, well, I love how you like, like pointed that out. Recognizing yes. it is hard sometimes. Yes. And it's always like, to me, like in my mind, I would always tell myself, I'm like, being an entrepreneur is not a job. Like it's not yeah. a career. And so, you know, yeah. like, I think we get stuck in this very like cultural mindset where it's like, oh, this is not like, like that's play stuff for people that, you know, are in between jobs or whatever. And I'm like, actually, no, like I'm like killing it as an entrepreneur and I'm going to call myself an entrepreneur because it's awesome. So, yeah, no, it's true. I think that there's a lot of stigmas being an entrepreneur. And I feel like one of them is that you have to be like a CEO or something to be an entrepreneur. But I mean, there's people who work for jobs and are entrepreneurs. You know, you could be both. You could be whatever you want to be, honestly. Yes. But it's funny how people like to place titles on other people. Um, when And that's what makes it so hard, I think, to even call yourself that is because you're, you recognize what other people call as an entrepreneur and you're like maybe I don't fit that but it's a mindset it's it's you know more than that so I totally agree with that so I want to talk a little bit more how did I mean why did you create Navy Brand um I know that your partner is amazing from what I could tell and you know you've built this amazing brand but what like inspired you to create it what's your passion behind Navy Brand yeah um, so we built Navi because we felt like there was just this huge gap in the industry, you know, like, so when I left college, I went right into advertising and it was great. I learned a lot. Um, but I always felt like I was being pushed to support brands that I didn't necessarily support mm -hmm. brands that I didn't know anything about brands that, you know, I felt like weren't necessarily ethical or that honestly, I just didn't care about. So I'm sitting here, you know, doing advertising and trying to market these brands. And I'm like, does this matter? Like, is it making a difference in the world? And so I went off and started freelancing and I did social media management um, for all of these companies that I cared about with people that I cared about that I was building real relationships with. And then when I met Natalie, um, you know, she was very much in, in a space where she was like, I'm ready to start my own business. I want to do something that's mine and, you know, like be able to foster it and baby it and have my own thing. And I was like, well, you know, what would be amazing because I need somebody that has that piece is somebody that wants to partner with me to help support ethical mm -hmm. brands. Like I, I'm just, I'm done doing advertising and doing marketing for brands that I don't believe in. And so I want to come together and start, you know, helping these brands. There's so many companies out there that are doing amazing things that nobody yeah. knows about. And so that's what, that's where Navi started. It started with the idea of helping brands grow brands that matter, brands that are doing something good and helping them grow and build their platform and share their story and their voice. Yeah, I love that. I think it gets so stick like messy with um, advertising and marketing. Mm -hmm. Like, I think a lot of people, especially if they choose that as a profession, get stuck in a job, whether it is an agency or with a company where they're not ethical or, you know, it just doesn't align with who they really are. And I love that you recognize that and you're like, let me just do my own thing and <laughs> take my clients 
um, that I believe in, like actually believe in authentically because why do mindless stuff? Mm -hmm. Like there's no point. Like that doesn't create a better better world for us. Like we need to do things that we believe in the mission and purpose every day. Yeah. Well, and I feel like I produce better work. Like I, like the stuff, like creativity that I've been able to tap into since starting Navi has been astonishing. You know, like I find it everywhere all the time. Like, I feel like I'm in this like creative mindset all the time. And I remember back at the advertising agency, how difficult it was to tap into that. Like, I felt like I was, you know, one of those people I'm like researching, like how to be creative because I just felt like it was not like something that came natural (laughs) to me. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this. And I'm like, I'm like constantly taking notes on my phone. I'm getting inspiration everywhere. I just am like thriving in this like creative space. And, and I think it really does come from one, my heart is in it. And two, we strongly vet the clients that we work with and the partnerships that we have. So, you know, we've, we've turned down clients and I, I hear this all the time. People are like, you are insane. Like you're a tiny agency. How could you possibly turn away clients? And I'm always like, we, the only way that we can continue to do the work that we're doing, this great work, quality work is if we work with quality companies that we believe in. And so, yeah, it probably is crazy to turn down the work, especially when we need the money as a business, so. but <laughs> it, it will make us worse yes. and I can't do that. So it's been really phenomenal because I, you know, again, I have this amazing partner that we're in line with those things. And so we, you know, we vet our clients, we vet our partners, we are very careful about what we do and how we do it, but it's made it to where the work that we're producing is better than anything I've ever done. Yeah. I think that is like a good lesson for, I think all entrepreneurs or founding teams or startups. It's like, sometimes you do have to see, well, there's a lot of times where you have to say no, where it just doesn't match or align and you can't like mix apples and oranges. It just doesn't happen mm-hmm. sometimes. Sometimes it works, right? Like, but I mean, if it doesn't align with your mission, why? Yeah. And what, what are the reasons you would even implement something not that aligns, that doesn't align well with your mission? You know what? I just, I, I get where you're at and I totally believe in that. Yeah. Well, and it can be so hard as an entrepreneur. And so I totally, I empathize. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I have this other business where we're not necessarily that way, you know, we're a lot smaller and we're not in the same position and, you know, we're kind of like anything that can help us be sustainable, like as a business, anything that can help us, you know, keep the lights on. And so I get, there's definitely different, different spaces when you're an entrepreneur. Sure. I feel like luckily I'm in a space in my life where I get to say no and I'm I'm in a space where that's okay and um, so I feel for companies when they can't um, but I also I strongly believe it's the thing that makes Navi unique is because we're able to we're we're very careful about who we partner with and when we partner with them it's great you know like we are producing great partnerships great relationships great work like it's just phenomenal yeah and it's authentic you know Mm -hmm. and I think that's a huge thing and especially I mean I hate to say it but there's too many brands on the market and companies on the market that don't they say like a company culture or something and they don't implement it and I think that you're like I love what you're doing and I think the way you're going about it is so important it's such a good example for other startups Thank you. Yeah. On that same note, I feel like it kind of dives into the nitty gritty, but um, one of the things that has been really cool about Navi too, is like on that, that note of like actually making and producing value and making sure that what we're not doing is just creating a good logo with some good words that tell people how great a company is. Instead, what we're actually doing is going in and consulting that company to be great. So for example, one of our clients that we just barely worked with or are still working with, but one of the events we just barely did was training a company. So training all of their employees on their new branding and making sure that the employee culture was actually good. So we went in and we said, what kind of policies and procedures do you have in place to protect your employees? What is your current process for new customers? What process are they going through? What customer touch points are they you know, getting? And then sure. making sure that it's streamlined and then training all the employees on that. So it's not just putting in a new motto or a new you know, company 
mission statement, it's actually going into the employees and saying, what is the experience like for you when you have to go through this? Going to the customers and say, what are you experiencing when you interact with this? And then make sure that they're in line. And yeah. we believe that you know, branding isn't your logo and your colors and your website. Those are fun things that we can add. Um, but branding is what your company is doing. That's your brand. So it's what are your processes? What are your policies? What is your product? Is it quality? Those are the things that we do. And so it's interesting. A lot of people come to us and say, you know, what, what is, what do you do? And, you know, they're like, so you do social media management and you create logos. And we're like, we do those things. Yes. But what we actually do, like the bread and butter of Navi is we actually get into it. We get into the nitty gritty and we say, you know, this policy that you have in place isn't working. It's not supporting your employees. You know, this process that you're using isn't the best thing for your customers or this one is working. Let's amplify this. And so, um, you know, we don't just do branding. We quote unquote branding. We go in and we actually look at a company and make sure that what they're doing is really quality and then we can market it and then we can brand it and say, okay, now, now what we're saying actually matches what you're doing. And that's the important piece. Yeah. I think a lot of people have misconceptions of branding and marketing. I think people, some people don't fully understand it. There's a lot more to it. Um, and I think, um, well, I know branding and marketing is to to totally different, two different things. They're totally different, but they work together. They're just different. And branding again, yeah, you said it is not just design. <laughs> There's like so much more that goes into it. It's about reflecting and understanding what you, what you stand by as a company. And if you're implementing them day to day in, uh -huh. internally and externally, like it's, and that's a difficult thing. Like it's a lot to think about being yeah. like, it, cause it's beyond your daily operations. It's, mm -hmm making sure it's reflecting it's being conscious as you all know because you are all about that um and you know i i totally agree and i love the process that you're taking and i yeah. think there needs to be more of that thank you yeah. <laughs> of it's course. Seriously, like i said it's been it's been absolutely amazing yeah no and it's so funny it, like just hearing all of this it it reflects who you are too so like i I love how you're true to yourself and that you're putting it in your work. And I, it's so cool to see, like, it's just so awesome. And hearing about it, it makes me super excited for you. Thank you. You're sweet. So how did you meet Natalie again? And I mean, you're a duo right now. How, how do you work, you know, as a woman team, um, being two entrepreneurs and just busy. You guys are both busy. I, I bet you money. You guys are both so busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are insanely busy. So it's actually an insanely funny story. So Natalie and I are double cousins. So her dad, my mom's siblings, her mom, my dad's siblings, but we didn't know each other until last year. So we had never met um, until last summer and we were able to connect for the first time ever and really like meet. And it was like an instant connection. I mean, like it, she was my cousin and it was like, oh my gosh, hi, yeah. like you're so great. And like, so, um, that has been awesome. So we kind of met and just started like really just hanging out and then ended up working for the same solar company for a while. Um, and she's, yeah, she's killer. So she's the VP of finance for a solar company. Um, and that's what she does primarily. So Navi is definitely on the side for her. She helps out with a lot of the, the finance and business side. And then I handle all of the creative and branding side. So she's awesome. And she does a lot with me on like the brainstorming. So we'll have like, you know, brainstorming sessions and she's super creative and has been able to tap into that world. But yeah, we technically are like as related as you can get without being sisters, but yeah. never see each other. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. I, um, I love how you guys made that connect, right? Like, I know it's like family and you guys are double cousins and I've never met each other until last summer, but I mean, like that connection's really cool. And I mean, I know you guys are family, but being two women entrepreneurial, like focused is is sometimes hard in the woman entrepreneurial space is to find a cool, you know, other female entrepreneur because they're so rare sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's so cool. 
Yeah. Well, especially one that complements your, your skills. Like, I feel right. like it's so funny because we're like the exact opposite, but we're exactly what the other person needed. Like, yeah. so like as far as like a business partnership goes, it is just like we, everything that I'm just like, I do not know how to do this. This is not my wheelhouse. She's like, oh, I got it. And like same thing, vice versa. So it's so, it's so nice. Cause I feel like together, I feel like we just have it all covered. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's, I think that's important too, right? When you find find a partner to do a business is not finding someone exactly like you. Cause then that way, like you guys will have the same perspectives. You want to get, have different perspectives. Yes. Yeah. I totally think that's awesome and different skill sets. Right. So yeah, it's really cool. I, I want to talk a little bit about you're a mom preneur. <laughs> so I want, I want to talk a little bit about that. Like, how do you balance all of that? I mean, that's crazy. And Natalie, I'm sure, I mean, she has her full-time gig and her mm-hmm. side thing. I mean, like you guys are busy. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you balance that? Yeah. Um, Natalie is also a mom. So we both have one wow. son. So it's been really fun because we actually- <laughs> That's cute. Get a, yeah, we get to um, work together on some of those things. And yeah, no, it is challenging. I think for any parent, you know, I think whether you're an entrepreneur or just like any job, it's always hard. Um, yeah you know, I often miss my child every single day. Um, but, you know, I actually listened to this podcast and read this book pretty recently called the dad advice project. And, you know, it was for dads, but it was so helpful. Um, it basically talked about how to balance work and parenthood and it was phenomenal. It came from, you know, these big, you know, CEOs and senators and pro athletes and all of these people that are just out there, you know, like that, like they're killing it, but they're doing big things and how difficult it is to manage parenthood on top of that. And the big thing that I took from that and that I really tried to implement is um, the quality over quantity, you know, kind of back to that conscious parenting thing that you and I have discussed many a time. Um, But just making sure that the time that I do spend with my child is extra quality that's it's a hundred percent there with him. And I find that's all he wants. You know, the, the, yeah. the quantity, I find he gets sick of me v- very quickly. He, <laughs> Whatever. he at the age, he's like, oh, please stop. So I like all the time that I spend with him, I try and just make sure it's a hundred percent. So, you know, and I work from my phone, you know, social media and branding is like, it's constant. The, the alarms and the alerts and the everything is constant. And so I have to physically like turn my phone off and put it in another room. But then like when he gets home at five, he goes to bed at seven 30, it's two and a half hours. So I go home and I pick him up and for two and a half hours, it's a hundred percent me and him. So the time that he spends with me, he doesn't know that, you know, my head space might may, maybe somewhere else. I try and be very focused on him. And then when he goes to bed, sometimes I go back to work or, yeah. you know, spend time with my husband or whatever, but, but I try really hard the time that he's there, it's his time. And I find that quality is so much more important. Yeah, no, I love that. I think it's easy nowadays. There's so many distractions, but especially technology. And if your work is being on technology all the time, I I get it how hard that could be to turn that off right in your brain to turn that off and be like okay I am now with my child (laughs) you know and this is me and Maverick's time you know I think that is like a very hard thing to do especially as an entrepreneur right because you're juggling multiple things Yep. So and I mean, it's, you. You know, it's, it, it is, it gets, it gets crazy. And, you know, my husband's also an entrepreneur. And so we spend a lot of time talking about business. Um, but I think there's also a reality where, you know, we, we get to create a normal for our children. Yeah. They don't know what's yeah. normal. And so I think where we've created a really good group around Maverick, like we create a lot of consistency. He goes to the same daycare and has the same people and the same routine and that's his normal. And so for him, you know, I think if it changed and one day I was like, okay, I'm going to go home. I think it would be a hard adjustment for him. He doesn't yeah. know that he's missing out. He has somebody that loves him all day long. It's just not me. And that's 100% okay. Like the people that are taking care of him, it doesn't have to be me all the time. And you and I have talked about this, but I am 100% a better mom when I'm not around my child all the time. And I know that it's very different for some other moms where they feel like they need to be with their kid or, you know, being working makes them more stressed. And I feel the exact opposite. I feel so fulfilled 
in my career that when I come home, I get to be very focused with my child. I don't yeah. get as irritated with him. I can be patient <laughs> with him. You know, the times like the weekends yeah. when I spend a long time with him, I'm like, wow, my patience is running thin. I'm not, I, I am not meant to be a stay at home mom. And I am a better mother when I am able to go and do the things that I'm passionate about and show him what it looks like to work hard and yeah. do great things for the world. Again, you're like an example to people. Like you really are. I mean, not only to the people you work like would work with or meet, but like even your son and setting that up at such a young age is so inspiring to me. <laughs> I've told you this before. Like I want to be we're like very similar, I think, but yeah. I want to be just like you when I grow up. <laughs> so, I mean, like, that's really, it's like so cool to hear that. And I mean, in being a woman in a very like heavily dominant male space in the entrepreneurial world, I think could be somewhat lonely or intimidating in the sense that like you feel as though you can't relate, but I think obviously there's commonalities, right? You, you read a a dad book on how to balance your life with children right and you're like oh I could pull from this like we're very similar humans are very similar overall as far as emotion wise but as a mother I'm sure there's a different connection sometimes you know and there's a different yearnings for your child and being there and nurturing um your kid so how do you like tell tell me about your experience being a woman entrepreneur and like your support and how you feel like as a community and what you, what's worked for you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yes. And on that note, you know, it is very different. Like my, like yeah. I said, my husband's an entrepreneur and we talk all the time, you know, I went on a, I went on a work trip recently and just missed Maverick the whole time, you know, and, and in reality, the time that I was actually away from him that I wouldn't normally be away was like four hours, right? Like a yeah. few minutes in the morning, two hours in the evening, the rest of the day, he was at daycare, like he normally would be, but yeah. I felt so much guilt. You know, I came home and I told Hunter, I'm like, I traveling is so hard. I, the whole time I just felt like Maverick was missing me and that I was a horrible mom and that I needed to be there for him. And Hunter yeah. was like, really? Like I went on a work trip a while ago. Like I felt fine. And like, he was like, like he was, he's taken care of like, why did he feel guilty? And I'm like, lo logically, I know that, like, I know, but it's, it is, it's just different. And, yeah. and I'm sure, you know, I'm sure there's dads out there that feel similarly or moms that can relate to Hunter, but sure. I, Felt like I, it, it was really hard for me. Um, so it is, it's challenging being a mom, being a women, woman in this space is really difficult. I find that I get dismissed frequently. Um, I get overlooked frequently, you know, I'll have people that, um, you know, we had this experience. It's so funny, but we had this experience with Natalie and I and our husbands, and we kind of like ran into some people and we're talking to them and they, asked our husbands what they do for work, mm. you know, what their passions are, their hobbies, sat there and talked to them for so long. And then they were like, yeah. oh, like, yeah, like, what do you, what do you guys do? Like, and like talking to me and Natalie, we're like, oh my gosh, hi, we are here. You know, like, it's just, sometimes you're just completely overlooked. Um, but I find that one thing that does help is I have a very big personality. So that's, that's, <laughs> That's always nice. <laughs> yeah. And two, I really focus like, again, on those like quality relationships. And I think the people that would overlook me wouldn't be a good relationship anyways. And so, so it's true. I'm like, you know, I'll go, I'll go put my effort and my time in elsewhere. And there are a lot of people in this industry that don't that really value our input and not just because we're women or just because we aren't, but men or whatever, but just because they care about people and what we have to say matters yeah. and so they're listening. And so for the people that do listen and the people that do care, we build really quality relationships with them. And I find that being a woman entrepreneur seems to be a back burner thing. Like it's not really something that needs to be discussed or this big, you know, noble thing. It's just, I'm a woman and I'm an entrepreneur and here I am doing your branding or your social media management. Yeah. And now I'm just showing up as a human instead of a mom and an entrepreneur and this and that and all of these things. So I, I love that. I um, have had similar experiences and I, and, you know, I think it's good to discuss 
being a woman entrepreneur because I it a while ago I, I learned this um and I, I forgot the term but it's basically unconscious biases that mm-hmm. people have yeah. and it's in the entrepreneurial space and um you know funding for women is definitely lower than men and I mean there's a lot of factors I'm sure but you know the judgment we get for our appearance, for just the way we approach things a little bit differently, the the way we talk, the language we use. I mean, we're getting the same shit done. (laughs) It's just that it's not the way, you know, people expect all the time. And so I think it's also good to have those discussions of being like, yeah, I am a woman entrepreneur, but I also have qualities. Like I'm a D dominant, I'm a dominant person. I have a dominant yeah. personality. I'm, yeah. I will learn. I will work hard. It's like, and I'm so sick of that stigma around the woman entrepreneurial space, right? It's like, oh yeah, you only sell jewelry and whatever. And everything's like not purposeful. And it's just for fun. Like, of course you're a social media manager. That's right. And I'm like, cool. That's cute. <laughs> yeah. You know, and th- those are hard discussions, but you're right. Like what I think is important is to be like, I am a human and I yeah don't look at me only as a woman entrepreneur or a mom entrepreneur. Like I'm, you know, I I could see that like it's tiring. (laughs) You're like, just look at me as a human. (laughs) Yes. And I love the whole power of and because I am, I am a mom and I'm an entrepreneur and I own two businesses and I'm silly and I like to play volleyball and I'm, I'm all of these things, like all of these things coexist at the same time. You know, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, I'm so many things. And if you boil it down and you look at only one of those, yeah, you're going to get a very isolated piece of who I am, but there's, you know, 50 other things that you're really missing that really complete who I am. And I feel the same way about other people, you know, Natalie, she's a wife and a mom and an entrepreneur, but we are definitely different people you know we're drastically different in the best ways and so I think if we just you know looked at people in that one segment we're going to miss so much of the importance of who they are yeah I agree 100% I think that they're I mean overall in life in general whether you're an entrepreneur or whatever it's like judgment right judgment can be very difficult to handle sometimes but also you just have to ignore it (laughs) you're like whatever like you can think whatever you want but this is who I am. And yeah, if you choose to judge me based off this one thing, go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I totally agree with that. I want to talk about um, the savvy stork. Am I saying that right? I want to make yes. sure. I want to talk about that because I love what you're doing with this brand. I love the reasoning behind it, your passion behind it. So like, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So the Savvy Stork is um, a clothing, I want to say like kind of like a clothing exchange, but more thrifty. Um, So it's a clothing store for for baby children, moms. Um, So we have nursing, maternity clothing, but it's all secondhand. So, you know, I do have a very big sustainability focus. It's me and my sister who run it. And she's also very passionate about sustainability. And, um, you know, it was started because after I had Maverick, I realized how quickly you go through baby clothes. And I just watched all of these clothes pile up and pile up and you are changing their clothes every three seconds. And every three months they're into a new, entirely different wardrobe. And it doesn't change until they're like 20. And even then sometimes it doesn't. And so, you know, we're going through clothes so quickly and fast fashion is just taking over the world. And so we started the Savvy Store because we were trying to make a difference. We saw it in our community and started there first. So we created a brick and mortar clothing store where people could bring clothes in and we would, they could donate them and we would recycle them, clean them, upcycle them, you know, and then resell them or, or, and then we also expanded and started online. So now we're, we're expanding. We started in, in our community and now we're, we're on to online, but you know, it's difficult. It's a, this, this business, I will admit it's, it's a struggle a little bit more than others that I've had, but we're figuring it out. It's a definite difficult industry to get into just because of some of the logistics of having a secondhand store, but the mission and the purpose behind it is sustainability at, at its heart. You know, we, we want to circulate the clothing that already exists so that we're not producing more waste. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> when every time you talk about this, uh, the savvy stork, I always like imagine these cute little onesies. <laughs> like, so I just have to say, it's just like, I love baby clothes. It's so cute. It's, um, how cute it is. <laughs> it's adorable. But I have to say, like, I think what I love about you and what you do is it's not easy like it's not right I think that there's things that you could do that are a little bit easier than a thrift store for baby clothing and <laughs> you're not doing it because this is what you love doing and this is what you believe in right like I I admire that like full-fledged and I have to say that um but I think it's so cool to hear that people are becoming more conscious and you know the, you're, you're seeing more and more of these brands come up and I, and I, I could see, and I could, and I could feel you because I've, you know, looked into the fashion brands and starting one and it's hard yeah. and, you know, and that combating fast fashion and prices and, and things like that. And that whole thing, fashion sector is a whole different thing that people, yeah. I think some people don't understand if they, they're not in it. But I admire your, your, you know, your passion and your purpose for, for why you created this brand and yeah. you're, I already know it's going to, it's going to take off. I hope so. It is so hard because <laughs> fast, fast, it's, off. It, it's exactly that it's fast. Yeah. It's yeah. so easy. And, you know, yeah. I hear people all the time they come into the store and they're like, why would I buy this one onesie for $3? Mm -hmm. If I can go buy a pack of seven for $7 and you're like, honestly, because it's better. It's better for the earth. It's better for your kid, but a lot of times money wins. And so that yeah. is our biggest thing. That's what we're combating. And the mission is there. The, the purpose is there. The importance of it is there, but you know, it, it is, it's, it's really challenging. Yeah. I, I love the vulnerability too, right? Cause it's hard to um, say that out loud you know, to be like, yeah, you know, I'm really struggling with this business, <laughs> but you know, being a serial entrepreneur, it's hard in itself already. So juggling two businesses, I mean, that's insane. Um, you know, you have to be easy on yourself a little bit <laughs> that, you know, one's going to be thriving more than the other sometimes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, and I do remind myself, you know, I'm like the purpose is there, right? So, you know, we always go back to like, initially it was really to help our community. And so if we need to pivot and shift and whatever we will, and it will be fine. And we have a lot of, you know, backup plans to the backup plans to the backup plans. But, you know, the ideal is that it just takes off and the world just realizes how important it is to stop producing so much waste. So right. fingers crossed. Right. Exactly. And I think there is a shift. Um, you know, it may be slow, but the shift is there and people want it. And so I, you know, I know, and I've told you, I'm like, I'm a future customer. <laughs> so you will definitely have my business when I have a baby. <laughs> so, you know, I want to talk about a couple more things. I, you know, especially with the Savvy Stork is like, what has been the most difficult and challenging thing for the Savvy Stork and, and starting that and running it and making sure it's okay? Um, because I mean, like you said, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. How have you overcame some challenges? What are some challenges, you know, that still exist? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know that we fully overcome any of the challenges, <laughs> but um, no, we, I will say the one thing that I have to start with is the Savvy Stork has been super resilient. We've had, you know, a team come and go. We've had a partner leave and a partner come. And so we've, we've had some of the biggest challenges, I would say, companies face, right? Like a change in leadership, um, a, an entire shift in our staff. You know, we've had yeah. an entire staff quit. Um, so we faced some of the biggest challenges we opened during COVID, you know, like I would say anything that you can imagine throwing at a new business we faced and we're still open. So like that to me is a win. Yeah. Um, we also started on like, I want to say when we very first opened, we had $7,000 that we had spent. So for a brick and mortar store that, you know, to buy inventory and all of those things and shelving and to, to start, we, we started on very low 
on low funding and we've continued that you know we've we've been barely self-sustainable and um for a very good reason like that's our goal right we want it to be sustainable as businesses all want to be um but some of the challenges we face you know i think it's some of the things that we've already talked about which is that like the fashion industry is very tricky um especially i would say there's a huge lack of education on where fashion is coming from, where your clothing is coming from. You know, even the biggest brands, I think if people really dived into them, they would see how unethical their clothing is. Um, And just, you know, the more you dive into the sustainability industry, you realize how important it is to shop secondhand. But that's just a lot of people don't want to. They don't like it. They have preferences of their clothing. They, you know, want different styles. Um, I would say it's really interesting because also being in the branding world, I see this, you know, we, we talk about like Instagram and the whole aesthetic and people get really caught up on it. And so it's hard to sacrifice some of that for the sustainability. And especially with our children, you know, as moms, we carry a lot of guilt. I've heard many a mom say, well, I don't want people to know I shop at the DI. And I'm like, that's the best place to shop. Like that's the most sustainable place. And so I think there's so much stigma, like the big challenge is just the stigma of shopping secondhand. Like we don't love our children or that we can't afford clothing. Mm -hmm. And in the reality, it's the exact opposite. We love our children so much that we want to protect the earth and, you know, not invest in the fast fashion industry. And we love them so much that we're going to continue to do that and help them understand how they can impact the world by consuming the right products. Sure. Yeah. I, um, I could see the difficulty of like, also like having a business selling product and a movement because you're selling a movement too, right? Like you're shifting the way people think naturally or based off of what society has normalized. And that is a really hard thing, you know? And I mean, with the challenges that you said <laughs> that you're facing currently and that have you you faced I mean that's so normal um it's so normal whether people say it or not like that's oh. so normal <laughs> that's like it's so common um but yeah I I seriously admire like everything you're doing with both your businesses and yeah. I think the underlining theme is really like you want to change people's lives in this world to be a better place with what you could provide, like what you're talented with. And then you're going to evolve and your brands are going to evolve and you're going to just keep figuring out ways to be environmentally sustainable. Maybe it's not this business, but the next one, like whatever mm. it is, like, cause that's who you are as an entrepreneur and that's what you care about. And honestly, being a woman entrepreneur has a lot of, um, upsides in the sense that you feel more empathy you feel yeah. more things and you could see a lot of things and implement it and man you're such a badass woman <laughs> Thank you. on yeah. that note too from a branding perspective I think it's one of yeah. the things that you know being a woman um, entrepreneur that I do have a leg up is just yeah. because the purpose and the mission runs so deep and you know we talk about these big companies and and what makes them outlast all the others and makes them stay around for, you know, hundreds of years is having that mission and that purpose and somebody that believes in it and keeps pushing it forward. And so, you know, like I said, with, with Navi, we care very deeply about our partners and our clients. And we feel the same way about the Savvy Stork. You know, we partner with ethical brands and we, you know, we focus on making a difference and the focus is sustainability and community and those things run deep. And so, yeah. you know, whether our brick and mortar store works or whether our online store works or fails, you know, the mission is still there and the mission will continue. And I feel the yeah. exact same way about Navi. The business may come and go, but the mission will always live. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And I think that's what matters to the core anyway. Yeah. So a couple last questions. So what is some advice you'd give to um, other entrepreneurs that want to start in this environmentally sustainable sector? Because that, like you said, is challenging. Also Mm -hmm. very, man, it's so fulfilling though too. So like, what is your advice on how to start or even what you've learned thus far? Yeah, 
Um, I mean, my primary piece of advice is make sure that that purpose is there. Um, I think a lot of times we get into these industries, these up and coming industries, because we see dollar signs and that is not what's going to make you successful. So find that purpose and have that purpose be the driver always, um, a hundred percent. And then, you know, a more tactical, like, you know, advice is network, like get your people, get them together, make sure you're getting to know people in the industry you want to dive into probably before you dive into it, you know, kind of get in there and get to know people and those relationships go a long way. Wow. I love that advice. So to the point too, you're like, I know exactly what you should be doing. <laughs> like, here's my advice. I don't. I, I do not have no, any you do. You do. You're so smart. I, <laughs> seriously. Okay. Yeah. Last question. All right. How can those listening and that have listened this far find you beyond you know, this podcast, what are some social handles or ways to get in contact with you? Yeah. Social is the best way to contact me. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm glued to my phone. So Instagram is probably the best way. Um, you can reach out to me at Navi brand on Instagram, or my personal account is savvy and Navi. Um, so either of those are great. We also have a website for Navi. So you can always reach out there if you want. It's navibrand.com. Awesome. Thanks so much, Savannah. You are amazing. And I literally, man, I seriously, I, I am so excited to be a mom because of you sometimes like when I talk to you, because being a woman entrepreneur could be so, and especially mom entrepreneur, you know, yeah. sounds so uh, sometimes I'm like, oh, that sounds so overwhelming. But when I talk to yeah. you, I feel so relieved. I'm like, oh, everything will be fine. You will be fine. So thank you for that. You're inspiring and so, so smart. And I love talking to you. Thank you. I feel the exact same about you. I swear every time I see you on social, like you are just living such an adventurous life. And I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in love with your life, but I will on that note, say you'll make an amazing mom and it is challenging, oh. but it's so, so worth it. Oh. Thank you. And I feel, I feel like you, like whoever listened to this podcast, like you really did touch their life because I know I could say the same. So thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll talk soon, Savannah. Thanks so much. All right. See ya. See ya. To learn more about start, visit strt.com. Music featured on this podcast is by Mia Hicken called Aftermath.